So today I am doing another tier list, which, you know, I've been accustomed to do um, a lot, that's for sure. But uh, this time it's for a, a very special album to me. Um, probably my favorite album of all time. And if you haven't heard it, you have to listen to it. You have to. It also contains my favorite song of all time. I'm not going to reveal that, that what that one is yet for the sake of this video. But this album is absolutely incredible. That's my point. So if you're coming here expecting me to, you know, criticize um, a lot of these songs, that's just not going to happen. I love these tracks. I love this album. This is my favorite album of all time. So I'm not going to tear it down, probably. So, I mean, there's a few minor critiques I could give. But it's nothing serious. This list here also includes Forget Her, which is not on the original track list of Grace. Um, but it's a great song, so it is... I'm completely okay with that being here. Um, but it is in order to the track list, so we'll just go off of that. And, um... Yeah, um, let's just get straight into it, I suppose. So, let me start with how I got into this album. So, I have a friend who um, ran into the song, I believe it's track 7, Lover, You Should Have Come Over. It, she ran into that song, and um, she recommended it to, it to me. And at first, um, I kind of glanced over it. I just kind of had it on in the background. She told me to check it out. She kind of had it on in the background. Didn't really... Didn't really give my ears, uh, uh, didn't really give the song the full attention of my ears. Um, but eventually I did, um, because it popped up on like, I don't know, I don't remember. I listened to it again at some point for some reason. And it clicked. And I did not stop listening to it. I mean, I'm still listening to it today. It's just, it's an absolute incredible track. And eventually it got me into the entire album. I discovered that Jeff is the guy who has a very popular rendition of Hallelujah. Um, and I also discovered that he only finished one album within his lifetime. And that album is now my favorite album of all time. All right. So now that it's out of the way, like how I got into Jeff and all that. Let's get started. The first song on this album is Mojo Pen. I think it's a great opener. I really do. Um, it's an incredible track. It really is. Um, from, like, I mean, the guitar playing is excellent. It's got a very interesting, like, the, the way Jeff kind of kicks in with the vocals. There's the slide guitar in the very beginning. Kind of like a similar beginning to, to Last Goodbye, in a way. Slightly different, but it's a similar uh, idea. Um, even Dream Brother, kind of. Um, there's three tracks on here that kind of start somewhat similarly, and it's Mojo Pen, Last Goodbye, and Dream Brother. But um, they all do it very well. Mojo Pen has a very interesting guitar part, and the way Jeff kind of kicks off with the, the, the soft vocals, um, and he kind of shows that off. He showcases his voice very well on this first track. Um, and the songwriting is quite good, just like the rest of this album. Um, it's a great opener. It's incredible, actually. And, like, when you when you head to that third chorus, and uh, it's, like, really hard. Like, a really hard third chorus, really hard rock, kind of. It, it gives me chills. It really does. And just his vocal uh, inflections, specifically in that part. Um, just absolutely incredible. And you get to the end. You get to the end of the verses where he uh, hits that high note on the final word of each verse. And the, it kind of transitions into the chorus. It's an incredible part of the song. It really, really is incredible. I think... I think when I first heard this song, I was skeptical skeptical of it. And then I heard track two, and I revisited track one, and I loved it. Mojo Pin is an S-tier song, which is probably going to be a trend in this tier list. I don't have any major complaints when it comes to Mojo Pin. In fact, I don't have 
a single one. Like, it doesn't even feel like it's almost six minutes. It feels like it's like three or four minutes, to me at least. It's incredible. And that goes for any of these tracks here. Like, I mean, there's two tracks that are closer to seven than six. Seven minutes, uh, as in, like, Hallelujah and Lover, Lover You Should Have Come Over are long songs. But they don't feel that way, in my opinion, because every single second is engaging. Um, and that's just why this album is so incredible. Track two is Grace. Absolutely incredible song. Yet again. The songwriting, how it kind of reflects on the themes of time, and how the clock uh, effect, the clock sounds kind of fade through the song. At a certain point, it's a genius. But the whole idea of using, you like, the, the songwriting is incredible. And then the chorus is, is sick, you know, wait in the fire. You know, it's, it's awesome. And his vocals on this track are ridiculous. Like, the way this song ends, the vocals at the end of this track are legitimately some of the vocal, best vocals I've ever heard in my entire life. You see live performance of this song, you will you will literally be blown away. Like after he goes insane, like you can literally hear his voice in pain because of how emotion how how much emotion he's throwing into the song. It's incredible how powerful the song is. This song has to be S tier. There's not even an argument against it. The songwriting is incredible. The guitar playing is incredible. The bass is sick. I don't want to glance over the bass in this song. The bass line is amazing. The way it kind of rides along with the vocals at certain points, and it kind of it kind of drifts off on its own, especially on live performances. The bass is incredible on this track. It I don't want it to be overlooked. This song is also S tier. Um, it would go over Mojo Pen for me. Now the next song is Last Goodbye. I recently discovered that this song is huge in Australia. This song is like frequently in top five songs of all time lists in Australia, which is very weird. I would not have expected that. It starts with the slide guitar, like I mentioned earlier. Um, it's a wonderful song. Uh, I used to think the intro kind of dragged on for a little bit too long, and it, they could have, you know, Jeff could have kicked it off a little bit faster. I I have I don't have that same feel anymore. I think it's an appropriate length. And then, um, the song is incredible. The bass is, is really cool. Um, the vocals are great. I do think, I don't think it's as good as the first two tracks. Um, frankly, I think I'd put it in A tier. I like the final verse. Like, the songwriting of the song is, is pretty good, which is a, a common theme. But I don't think I'd put it in S. I know this, this song holds a very special place in so many people's hearts. But I think this is an A-tier song. I don't know. It's never hit me as much as those first two. It's a great song. Don't get me wrong. It's incredible. But I don't think it's S-tier level. Um, I just don't think the song explores interesting enough ideas musically for me to be at the same level of Grace and Mojo Pen with it. I just, I don't think it does. Lilac Wine. Uh, this song is also quite good. Um, I will say this, this is one of my least favorites from the album. It is a great song. Um, it's it's great. I'm not saying it's bad at all. There's not a bad song on this album. It's a great song. But it's certainly one of my least favorites. It's a beautiful song. His vocals are beautiful on this track. Guitar is beautiful. This is one of the... One of the songs he did not write on this album. Um, doesn't really matter. The song's incredible. Um... But I do think it's the worst of the first four tracks. I think I would put it low A tier. Not low A tier, just below Last Goodbye. It's a great song, like I said. Like, it's just a little empty, I feel like, at certain points. And that's really the only thing that's holding it back um, from S tier. 
And obviously that's intentional, but it's just not really for me as much as these other tracks. It's an incredible track, though. Like, I will listen to it. Uh, I mean, I listen to this album all, literally almost every day. So I listen to it a lot. Um, but it's not something I, like, go out of my way specifically to listen to Lilac like One. I think there's better songs in this album. So, yeah. The next song, track five, is So Real. This song I originally wasn't a huge fan of. I love it now. It's an incredible song. The outro gives me chills every time. I don't know how to explain it. The guitar, just the entire song kind of goes rampant in that final section. It's incredible. And like the I love you part, the little bridge, the way he inflects his voice on the words I love you, and uh, but I'm afraid to love you. It's just incredible. I don't really know how to explain it. And then the intro of the song is quite good as well. The vocals throughout are incredible. Um, the chorus is great. The songwriting is great. It's a great song. It's better than Mojo Pen, worse than Grace. It's an S tier. Next song is Hallelujah. Also a great song. Easily Jeff's most popular. It's obviously a song that he did not write. Originally written by Leonard Cohen. But... It is the best version of Hallelujah out there. The one thing I the one thing I will point out from the song is there's some quite good guitar playing in the song. Obviously the song is incredible. It's not his, but it's still incredible. Um there's this part where he it's literally at the very end of the song where he holds this note for about 19 seconds, I believe. It's absolutely unbelievable. You couldn't do it, I promise, unless you're insane but trust me you couldn't um but it's an incredible track and it also gives me chills like every song on this album can give me chills and they have every song on this album has given me chills one way or another at some point but hallelujah is a great song um i'm gonna put it over mojo pin in between so real and mojo pin i don't think it's better than so real but it's better than mojo pin the next song I'm going to add another tier four. Is that possible? Yeah. Okay. So this might be a hot take. Lover You Should Have Come Over is the best song of all time. I've never heard such emotion and such incredible songwriting like, it blows me away every single time I listen to it. And, like, every time you try to sing along, you're like, oh my goodness, I can't sing this. And Jeff just takes it away. And you are blown away every time. This song is a testament to what music should try to be. This song is simply one of the most beautiful emotional one of the most beautiful emotionally striking songs I've ever heard in fact it is the best song I've ever heard like the little it's never over section absolutely incredible and then you have the background vocals in the background absolutely incredible the production on this track probably the best on the whole album um, just the way the bass fits in with the acoustic guitar as soon as that guitar kicks in, you can tell. It's like, oh my goodness, this production is sick. And those notes he hits towards the end, absolutely incredible. The songwriting, legitimately the best songwriting of any song I've ever heard in my life. The organ intro is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It sets a, a fun almost a funeral theme. And that's honestly perfect. Like, I remember I first heard that intro and I was like, it sounds like I'm at a funeral. And the first line had the word funeral in it. And I was like... This is what songwriting should be. Like, it set a theme that is so perfect for the song. Um, this song is absolutely insane. It's the best song of all time. Insane vocals, good bass, the production's incredible, acoustic guitar's beautiful, the electric guitar's beautiful as well, the drums are great, 
Also, I I haven't talked about the drums much, but the drums in this album are also incredible. And there's a track that I will highlight when it comes to drums later on. But yeah, that song is just unbelievable. And I've thought that for quite a while now. The next song is Corpus Christi Carol, track 8. I originally didn't like this song. I would say it's the worst song on this album. I just think it doesn't explore the vast reaches of, of what the other songs do. Um, it's a traditional song, so it's not something he wrote. It's a very interesting song. It's very different from the rest of the album. But I still think it's a pretty good song that I didn't really think that was that good at first. I would put it in B tier. It's a, it's a solid song. It really is. I won't skip it if it's on. I think it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Now the next track... Eternal Life. This song is also different from the rest of the album in the fact that it is hard rock at its finest. Like, this song is incredible. Like, it it truly is. Like, the guitars are so powerful in the song. The vocals match the powerfulness. I love the songwriting of the song. It's easily the most societal song on the album in that a lot of the lyrics pertain to society. It's a beautiful track. Um, it, it really is. I don't have any major complaints when it comes to that song. I feel like the chorus was like I, at first listen first few listens chorus was a little underwhelming for me but it's I'm definitely grown into the chorus I think the chorus is quite good um for the song um at least um it it's quite the track and the vocals especially towards the end are incredible now um the song that I was talking about in terms of drums the drums on dream brother are absolutely incredible like, this is what I was talking about. And the lyrics are awesome. This is a very moving song. When you really look at the meaning of this song, Dream Brothers is an incredible song. The intro is really cool. You know, like I talked about the slide guitar. And then there's a lot of other aspects of the song that are beautiful as well. This is a great closing track. Uh, if you don't know Grace, it technically is the closing track. Forget her as a bonus track. Um, Dream Brother is a beautiful track about Jeff and uh, about I believe this track is about he's telling his friend it's essentially a message to his friend to not leave his wife and child behind Jeff's father abandoned his family um, pretty much before he was born and he didn't want that to happen to his friend's kid and I believe that's what this track is about. This song is incredibly moving, incredibly emotional. Drums are great. The guitars are great. This is one of the... This is an incredible song. Like... <laughs> it really is. And it's grown on me. It's the biggest grower on this whole album, I would say. I would put it between So Real and Hallelujah and the S tier. The next song is Forget Her. Also, an incredible track. Like, I know I've said that a lot. Um, the lyrics are great. If you didn't know, I believe this track was originally supposed to be track 5 over So Real. But Jeff liked So Real better, so he put So Real over Forget Her. Forget Her eventually was released, but after it was released posthumously. Um, it's an incredible track. It really is. It deserves to be on the album, whether that's, you know, replacing another track or not. It's an incredible song. Um, it's, it's got more of an R&B feel than the other songs in the album. It's got a great solo in it. And that little vocal inflection right after the, not inflection, that little vocal section right after the, right after the, uh, solo is just so powerful. Um, it's really a testament to his, his abilities. Jeff was truly one of the greatest musicians alive at the time, and I, it, it's just incredible. Um, I would put this song between Dream Brother and Hallelujah. The chorus is great, by the way. The chorus 
of Forget Her is one of the better choruses on this album. It's just absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, it's really a shame that Jeff passed. Um, it's so sad. Because I think if Jeff had the opportunity to create albums like My Sweetheart the Drunk, which was to be released, which has some highlights like in the compilation album they released, which like like Vancouver's an incredible song. I love that song. And then songs like Everybody Here Wants You, The Sky's a Landfill, they're great songs. But a lot of the songs aren't fully mixed off of sketches. I feel like if those songs saw their full ideas, My Sweetheart the Drunk could even be at the level of grace. Um, so it's really a shame he passed on. It would have been a treasure to see what he would have brought to us. Um, yeah, rest in peace, Jeff Buckley. And if you have not heard this album... You have to. It's probably the best album of all time. <coughs> and if you're not going to listen to the album, at least listen to Lover, You Should Have Come Over. It is the greatest song I've ever heard in my life. Um, and if you this album came out in 1994, I would probably define it as an alternative rock record, even though it's very singer songwritery. Um, with some R&B and soul influences, even some, like, little bluesy stuff in there, too. It's absolutely incredible. Um, rest in peace, Jeff Buckley, and, uh, yeah. <laughs>